Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk to you about the conservation of energy and uh, some of the sort of questions that you uh, might get asked in the uh, higher paper. So we'll start off just by considering uh, a kind of roller coaster like this. Um, and we'll just draw a few little bits of information on this roller coaster so we can sort of get going. Let's imagine we've got a little car at the top and a little car when it gets to the bottom of a, of a let's say, a hill. Uh, might be the first hill, might be the second hill, doesn't really matter. Okay, now let's um, put a few numbers in before I can get on to talking about uh, this. Let's say that it's about 72 meters high, okay, uh, at the top of the hill. Bottom of the hill, obviously, it's you know, no meters high. Uh, and let's just say that this uh, has a mass of 100 kilograms, okay. Well, the question I want to, you might get asked, is um, how fast is the car going at the bottom? At the bottom. And there's um, a reason this question gets asked quite a lot, because it sort of tests whether you understand something, which in physics is called the conservation of energy. So, if we were going to answer this question, we'd have to first have a little look at what the conservation of energy is all about. So the conservation of energy um, is this idea. Um, whenever something happens, you've got a process or something taking place. Okay, this is before, that's afterwards down there. Okay, if you count the amount of energy, or if you like, you count the number of joules. Okay, uh, before. Okay, then something happens, and you count the number of joules of energy, if you like after the thing has happened. So we'll look at the amount of joules here at the top of the hill and at the bottom of the hill. Uh, well, the law of conservation of energy says that these two numbers are exactly equal to each other. Um, and it's a really, really powerful tool to help us figure out um, some uh, problems uh, relating to um, what speeds things are travelling at, what things uh, will be doing in the future, or uh, if something was doing something now, what was it doing before? Uh, and so I'll rub most of this out and um, we'll get down to answering this question. How fast is the car going at the end of the first hill? Uh, remembering this, the amount of joules of energy before and after have got to be exactly the same. Okay, so here we go. We've got um, the amount of energy in this car. Let's say this car... Um, at the top of the hill, it's got no speed. So it's just going to tip over, brrr, go all the way down like that. We want to know how fast is it going here. Uh, well, it's very, very simple. What we do is we take the two types of energy it uh, might have, okay, gravitational potential energy, height energy, we've called that in the past. Uh, that's the energy uh, which we can calculate using these formulas, okay, half mv squared, like that. Um, and then we can compare that to how much energy um, this car should have at the bottom. And again, we'll look at the height energy and the kinetic energy using these formulas that we've been using. So we'll have the mgh plus half mv squared here. Now, the law of conservation of energy says that these two have got to be equal to each other. So eventually, uh, once we've put all the numbers in and we've figured a few things out, we're going to uh, put this number here equal to uh, this number here. Um, but before we do that, let's pop the numbers in. Okay, so we've got on this side, we've got, uh, well this is 100 kilos uh, times by g. Now, on Earth, the strength of gravity, remember, is always 10, okay, meters per second squared or something like that. Sometimes it's newtons per kilogram, but uh, the key point is uh, it's 10, that's nice then. And uh, we're going to times it by the height of the hill. 72 over here. Um, we're going to add to that, okay, uh, the kinetic energy, which is a half times the mass, uh, and the mass is 100. Uh, but we're going to times it by v squared, and v squared, if at the very beginning it's got no speed, is naught squared. And that rather conveniently means that we can uh, eliminate all of this, because that is going to be equal to zero. So the total energy to begin with is all height energy, and that's 100 times 10, which is 1,000, times 72, gives us 72,000. 
Okay, well that's the number of joules at the beginning, and that's going to be equal to uh, the number of joules that we have at the bottom. So that's going to be uh, mass, which is 100, times by g, that's 10, times by the height. Now, the height down here is 0. Okay, and just like before, that is going to disappear and become 0. And we're going to add to that a half a hundred times v squared. And v squared is the thing we're going to try and find out. Okay, so we do know that half of uh, this, let's do that in blue, half times a hundred times uh, v squared um, is going to be equal to the amount of energy here. Okay, so now we can go to work. Um, well, we can take this 2 up to that side where it becomes times 2. Okay, so uh, for very easily uh, that's uh, 144,000 joules uh, is equal to 100 v squared. Okay, and let me just go down the next line and get to, uh, well, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Uh, so that leaves us with 1440 equals v squared. Okay, and that means that uh, v has got to be the square root of 1440. Uh, and this will give us an answer. Uh, put the calculator up in a second. And is the calculator, so let's put that in, 1440, uh, I've got the square root of that, okay, so that's 37 meters per second, okay, 37.9, let's call that 38 meters per second, so that's 38 meters per second, okay, and that is the speed of this car at the bottom of a hill this big when it's that much massive and it doesn't actually have any speed to begin with and all we've done is have this energy before equals the energy after and on the higher paper you might need to do something a little bit like this okay well that's all for me